The secret word tonight is heart. H-E-A-R-T. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. The comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Well, spring is just around the corner. I wish I was. Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx. Thank you, thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who gets first whack at it? We asked if there were any couples here tonight who had been married more than 50 years. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. and Mrs. A.S. Thacker, and here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. <laughs> and if you say the secret word at any time we're, we're talking, you'll win $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you always have with you. So you two are married more than 50 years, eh? Uh, how long have you been married, uh, Mrs. Thacker? Fifty years, and last November. And uh, how long have you been married, Mr. Thacker? <laughs> how, do, how does it feel to be celebrating your uh, 50th uh, wedding anniversary, Mr. Thacker? Well, just beautiful, yeah. wonderful. About the same as the 49th, I suppose. Huh? <laughs> and uh, how was the 48th? Do you remember that? About the same. About the same. <laughs> Well, let's try the 39th. How was that year? Huh? Well, it was wonderful, too. Yes, that was a great year, the 39th. <laughs> How long have you been in California, Mr. Thacker? 27 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, why, did, why did you come here? Well, we was living in Spokane at that time, and I wanted a warmer climate. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it have been cheaper to put on heavy underwear? <laughs> Where, where did you formally reside, uh, Mrs. Thacker? Before that, I mean. In Texas, Gainesville, Texas. Was that near Nacogdoches or Denison? Or, uh, <laughs> yes. I was once pinched in Nacogdoches for playing euchre on the front porch of the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> happened to be on a Sunday. You're not allowed to play euchre on uh, Nacogdoches on Sunday. Right? <laughs> As a matter of the fact, the way I play, they shouldn't have allowed it on Saturday either. <laughs> Uh, may I ask uh, how old you were when you got married, Mrs. Thacker? Twenty. Twenty, yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. And how old were you when uh, Mrs. Thacker took you out of circulation? Uh... I was twenty-six. Well, you're seventy-six? I'm seventy-seven now. Seventy-seven. Well, you just passed the spirit of seventy-six. Huh? <laughs> what, sort of, what sort of work do you do now, Mr. Thacker? I don't work. You're a bum? <laughs> you look so prosperous, Mr. Thacker. <laughs> you worked a mere 50 years and then quit? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> don't you want to amount to something when you grow up? <laughs> do, you, do you have any children, uh, Mitty? Yes, sir. I have uh, two sons. You have two sons. That's in Arizona, isn't it? Uh... <laughs> Do you, do you have any grandchildren, uh, yes, Mrs. Thacker? Sir. Yes, sir. I have two. Two. Do you have any great-grandchildren? No, sir. Do you have any great-great-grandchildren? No, sir. You're in a rut. <laughs> now, after all these years of marriage, do you have any pet name for your wife, Mr. Thacker? Yes, sir. I, I always called her Sweetheart. Well, you just said hot, and that was the secret word, so you just won $100 in cash. Compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Thank you. Thank you. And we are definitely using hot as the secret word tonight in honor of the 1950 hot campaign now going on all over America. And Mrs. Uh, Thacker, wh what do you call 23 Skidoo here? <laughs> I call him Shorty. You call him Shorty? <laughs> Is that for any financial reason? Or... 
Do you remember who did the proposing when you uh, when you were engaged, Mr. Thacker? Yes, sir, I did. Well, what did she say after you proposed? I don't have any idea. <laughs> Maybe she said no. How do you know? This, this, this could all be a horrible mistake. <laughs> Mrs. Thacker, do you remember exactly what you said when he proposed? No. You said no. Well, then I was right. It is a horrible mistake. <laughs> Well, seriously, it's been inspiring having you two here with a 50-year marriage. You've set a fine example for the young couples of America. And I hope you'll invite me to your 75th anniversary. Now, in just one minute, you're going to work together for a chance to win a lot of money. You bet your life. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer pledges himself to treat you fairly and squarely, day after day, year after year. In fact, that's the way the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America feel about all the customers they serve. That's their pledge, and they'll do their utmost to live up to it at all times. No matter why you drive into a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's, you'll find it the honest desire of all the folks there to serve you to the very best of their ability. They know that's the kind of attention that will make you a satisfied and steady customer in the years to come. That's why it pays to stop where you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now then, let's see if you two youngsters will get the chance at the $1,500. Phantom, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected Name the Fruit as your category. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, here's your first question. You have $20, and how much will you risk? Ten. What type of fruit is a pippin? An uh, apple. An apple is right. <laughs> $30. You're on your way, as Fenneman says. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. How much of your $30 will you try? $10. $10. What is a Bartlett? Pear. A pear is correct. <laughs> now they have $40, Groucho. Now you have $40, huh? Here's your third question. How much of the 40 will you try? 20 What kind of fruit is a muscat? M-U-S-C-A-T. It's a fruit. Do you think it's a grape? And you think it's a grape? Well, it is a grape. Ah! <laughs> We're climbing now. We have sixty dollars, Groucho. Uh, now you have sixty dollars. Uh, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the sixty are you going to go for? How much you say, Mother? I said thirty. Okay, thirty Listen. then. <laughs> what is meant by a yellow cling? A yellow cling is a peach. Is the peach is right? And they wind up with a grand total of ninety dollars. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away now. You might get a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still heart. Yes, George. Perhaps the next couple will say it. Yes, George. Just before we went on the air, yes, our George. studio audience selected Blanche Ames, a department store buyer, and Mr. Alexander Atkinson, a married man. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. If one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Atkinson, huh? Right. You're, you're the married man? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very happily married. Very happily married. Oh, well, yeah. There's no point in getting pugnacious about it. Huh? Very <laughs> Atkinson, there's a... Are you related to the dramatic critic on the New York Times? I'm related to a former governor of Georgia. Well, that's not oh, quite the Brooks, same thing. Brooks huh? Atkinson. I mean Brooks Atkinson. Oh, yes. He's a distant relative. You see, well, he must yeah. be if you're here and he's in New York. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're, where are you from, Mr. Atkinson? I'm from the land of sunshine, flowers, beautiful women, juicy oranges, and no smog. <laughs> are you inferring that we have smog here in California, Mr. Atkinson? Oh, uh, that's what I've heard. Of course, I live out in beautiful, enchanting uh, San Fernando Valley myself. I don't get out in Los Angeles very much myself. I see. I'm kind of intrigued with San Fernando Valley. The Off promise, hand. the promised land. Well, they've been promising a lot. I don't know whether. They're right. <laughs> Offhand, I would say you are a realtor. Is that right? Well, I have uh, I have a little property down in Florida, 
But recently I got a letter saying... Uh, that it was underwater? That they discovered... <laughs> They discovered land on my property down there. They discovered land yeah. on your property? <laughs> a mighty good joke. You mind if I use that next week? Maybe I might permission, all right. Just, uh, just what is your profession, Mr. Atkinson? Well, uh, back during the Hoover Prosperity that we were having back in the 30s... I, I beg your to... pardon. Uh... <laughs> not, please, not while I'm smoking, huh? <laughs> I got tired of eating the grapefruit and oranges. That's about all I had to eat, so I wanted a little meat. I just go out and catch the bullfrogs at night. <laughs> I go out at night and catch these frogs, and you take them and fry them in butter. Man, that's better than southern fried chicken. Well, I must try that sometime. <laughs> tourists, these tourists came down there. And, you know, and... these are Yankees. Anyway, they uh, kind of took a liking for these. <laughs> Uh, what do you do going. now, Senator Claghorn? <laughs> well, at the present time, it's my good fortune to be associated with the finest studio in Hollywood. That comes from the bottom of my heart. That's Warner Brothers. You went on gabbing so long that you finally won a hundred dollars. You said hot, and that's the secret word. So you win a hundred dollars in cash, no compliments of the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. Huh? I certainly will. Mr. Atkinson, are you related to the Atkinson in New York? Huh? I'll tell you, I've got relatives everywhere, and George is full full of them. I got relatives all over Georgia. Yeah, well, you could talk yourself into relatives. <laughs> uh, how, do, how do you do, Miss, uh, Miss Ames? How do you do? No, I asked you first. How do you do, huh? <laughs> this is high-class cocktail conversation. <laughs> you're, a, you're a department store buyer, is that right? That's right. Uh -huh. How many department stores have you bought this week? <laughs> I don't buy department stores. I buy for a department store. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Well, which one? Uh, Orbox. You're from Orbox, you say? In, uh... And Philadelphia. Did you buy d department stores back in Philadelphia? <laughs> I'm afraid you don't follow me. <laughs> well, even if I did, there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh... <laughs> Where, where do you do this buying, Blanche? Uh, at Orbox in the Oval Room. And well, what do you buy for them? I buy better dresses. Better dresses? And who buys the worst ones? Huh? <laughs> Did you ever buy any dresses that your store can't sell? Um, I get stuck with a few white elephants. White elephants? Huh? I can see why you get stuck with them. <laughs> what do you do with these white elephants? Well, when they don't move, why, we usually mark them down for sale. If they don't move, they must be dead, is that it? <laughs> Imagine a store full of dead white elephants. <laughs> must be quite a problem on a hot day. Huh? <laughs> well, wh where do you keep them? Where do you keep these uh, dead white elephants, huh? Well, we hang them on racks. <laughs> oh, no wonder they're dead, huh? <laughs> Now, let's be calm and go at this thing scientifically, you know, Blanche. Huh? Now, what I originally asked you, Blanche, was do you ever buy any dresses for your store that you can't sell? Yes, uh, I'm afraid to... Now, are they changing the styles this year, Blanche? Yes, the trend is more towards the shorter skirt. Do you think we could speed up that trend a little? Huh? <laughs> After all, I haven't got so long to go, you know. <laughs> Well, where are skirts being worn now? And don't tell me around the waist, huh? Where are they being worn now, Blanche? About halfway between the knee and the floor. Hmm. That sounds like you need new elastic in your suspenders. <laughs> well, wake up, uh, Mr. Atkinson. <laughs> How long does your wife wear her dresses? Sir? About two or three years. <laughs> Okay, go back to sleep, Mr. Atkinson. <laughs> I'll 
I'll wake you up as soon as Thyman runs again. <laughs> well, we know a good deal about department stores and elephants. Now, you're going to work together for a chance at $1,500. You beat our other two couples, and you get a chance at the big question later. I can't tell you how much the first couple won, but Spenham is off stage to remind our listeners. Mr. and Mrs. Thacker, who've been married for 50 years, earn $90. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected romantic songs as your category. Here's your first question. You have $20. How much are you going to risk? Ten. Let's see if you can identify this song. Play, Jerry. Sweet and lovely. Sweet and lovely. <laughs> We're on our way with $30, Groucho. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the $30 will you try? Twenty. What's the name of this romantic song? Okay, Jerry. Rendezvous. What is it? Talk up. One answer between you. In some secluded rendezvous. Oh. Cocktails for two. Yes. Cocktails for two. We're on the way now. I have fifty dollars. Well, you came to in the last quarter there, Blanche. All right, here's your third question. How much of the fifty will you try? Forty. Give me the title of this song. Once in a while. Once in a while. They're really climbing now. They have ninety dollars. All right, you got ninety dollars. Now how the much you going? The whole ninety. The whole ninety. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? You're going to go for the ninety? Go yes. for the ninety. What's this song? Give me the title. Small and hotel. Small hotel is right. And they wind up with one hundred and eighty dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, we'll soon know who gets the chance at the $1,500 question. Fenneman, who's ahead? The department store buyer and the married man are leading with $180. And the secret word is still heart. We invited some hobos and some job analysts to the show tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Evelyn Robbins and Mr. Bill Hewitt. Fenneman, where on earth did you ever get a hobo? Oh, you have to ask the hobo, Groucho. And here they come. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome uh, to the DeSoto Plymouth program. If one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Okay, now I'll find out where the hobo comes from. Uh, uh, Miss Robbins, where are you from? Huh? New York. <laughs> New York. How long have you lived out here? Three years. Three years. Uh, well, you add quite some beauty to the local scene. Thank you. Who do, who do you work for? The Ames Bureau of Employment. What do you do there? Well, I'm a job analysis. And what is the function of a job analysis? Well, we interview people, we screen them, and we test them. We try to determine what type of position they're best suited for. You don't analyze jobs, and you just analyze people. Is that right? You could say that. I, I already did say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, by sifting through all the facts about uh, Evelyn here, uh, I gather that you're the hobo. Is that right? Uh? That's right. Uh, let me hear you put a bite on me for a cup of coffee. Now, go ahead. Uh, a uh, uh, hobo don't put the bite on anybody for a cup of coffee. Uh, what do you mean? I've had I've had them ask me for coffee. Huh? Well, that's a tramp. A tramp asks you for a <laughs> cup of coffee. A hobo goes out and gets it different. He gets a, runs a butcher shop for meat and the bakery for toppings, and then he cooks it up. Bakery for what? Toppings. That's day old bread, stale stuff. Well, if you want stale stuff, just listen to me here. Huh? <laughs> How do you get it from the butcher? I mean, you walk in there and he throws you a hunk of meat? Huh? Well, you give him a song and dance. Just tell him, say, I'm trying to cook up something down in the jungles down here, and I uh, like to have a little meat. It's a good idea to have something on the arm, like some potatoes, and say, look, Mac, I got a loaf of bread here. How about give me a little meat to go with it? They easy. It's a pushover. Yeah. I'll try that tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Tell me, Bill, as a knight of the road, how do you live, huh? Oh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Like an actor, huh? Yeah. <laughs> where, where, where do you live? Well, if I'm working in a city like Bellhop or Dishwasher, I rent a room. If I'm not working, I live in the jungle. Well, when you're camping in the, in the jungle, as you call it... Uh, what, what kind of meals uh, do you make? Make a mulligan stew. Uh, well, how do you make mulligan stew? Do you get them angry first? Or, uh... <laughs> well, first you've got to have a lot of meat, see? A lot of meat, eh? Yeah. Well, you're back in the butcher shop again. Huh? <laughs> then you throw in a lot of vegetables, your own salt and pepper and everything you get, and you cook it in an open fire. And you can. 
Well, suppose you can't uh, get any meat. Huh? I wouldn't be a mulligan still then. No? Well, what would you have then? Huh? I'd be slum gullion, I guess. <laughs> What do you drink with your slum gullion? Oh, battery acid. Battery acid? Yeah. Well, you should at least be able to start on a cold morning, huh? <laughs> Just what is battery acid? Well, that's fresh coffee. The first time it's, uh, you boil it off. After that, it's no longer battery acid. What, do you, you use it over again? Sure, then it, but it's not battery acid then. That's dishwater mud. Yeah. How many times do you cook it over? Oh, that all depends on conditions. Yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of coffee, it's not necessary. Sometimes when things are tough, you got to boil it over a lot of times. In my house, it tastes like dishwater the first time. <laughs> How do you keep in touch with people when you're on the road? Where do you get your mail? Oh, mostly general delivery. You know? yeah, well, what kind of work do you do when you're working, Bill? Oh, any kind of work. I've been a sailor, I was a fireman, I worked on deck, I worked in copper mines, been bellhop. Worked in harvest fields. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you get from place to place? Uh, do you ride the rods? Oh, they haven't rode the rods in 25 years. Uh, I started first on the whole board in 1950, and I was 15 years old. Yeah, I ride boxcars, ride a reefer. What's, a, what's a reefer? A reefer is the end of a fruit car when it's not iced. And you ride a, a tender, ride the blinds on a passenger train, ride the deck. Pretty dangerous, isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> what kind of car do you prefer? I mean, well, I prefer Pullman. But, well. <laughs> well, I mean, in lieu of a Pullman, huh? Well, that depends Let's on say there isn't a Pullman available, huh? <laughs> That's well, been de-iced. Well, that depends on the weather. If it's in there... Uh, summertime, I like an open gondola where I can see and get the fresh <laughs> air. <laughs> well, what do you like best about the life you lead? Uh... Well, I like to be free. I don't like to be tied down. I like to go places. I like to get up in the morning when I want to. I don't want some wife telling me to get up or sticking a cold feet in my back. <laughs> you you prefer a refrigerator car to a woman, is that <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been very interesting, and uh, having you here tonight, and uh, now you're going to try for a chance at the $1,500 question. You beat our other two couples, and you win a chance at all that money. I can't tell you how much our other couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The department store buyer and the married man are ahead with $180. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected Islands of the World as your category. Is that right? Now, you have $20. How much are you going to try? Fifteen. Fifteen dollars. What ocean do you find the Hawaiian Islands? The Pacific. Pacific Ocean is right. Come on, Thirty-five dollars. Well, remember, you're going for fifteen hundred dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-five will you try? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. In what ocean do you find Greenland? In North Atlantic. In the Atlantic is right. <laughs> Now have sixty dollars, Rocho. Now you have sixty dollars. Here's your third question. How much of the sixty will you risk? Fifty. In what sea do you find the island of Corsica? Corsica? The Mediterranean. The Mediterranean is right. <laughs> They're really climbing now. They have one hundred and ten dollars. Say, you must have done a lot of reading in those boxcars. <laughs> Well, I sailed in there during this war. Oh, I see. Well, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. Now you have a hundred and ten dollars. Hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. In what ocean do you find the Isle of Tahiti? Uh, that's in the Pacific. In the Pacific, is right. And they wind up with two hundred and ten dollars, and that means that they get the chance of the total for the fifteen hundred dollars question. You know, you have a perfect right to be particular about the way your car is serviced. And that's why more and more car owners every day drive in to DeSoto Plymouth dealers. For that's where you get expert, courteous service at the lowest possible cost. You see, DeSoto Plymouth dealers are just as particular about your car as you are yourself. They have factory-trained mechanics working with factory-designed and approved tools and equipment. They see to it that the service they offer in their shops is the best service you can get anywhere. 
the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers throughout America take pride in their reputation for fast, efficient, courteous service. Remember this next time your car needs service. And drive in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here's the hobo and the job analyst, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. Well, uh, if you win this, you're really going to be able to ride in Pullman's... Uh... <laughs> Here we go for $1,500. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully and please, no assistance from the audience. Here it is. In 1914, the United States Army finished its biggest peacetime job. What is the biggest peacetime job ever accomplished by the Army? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Panama, Panama Canal is right. Well, you had the right answer, so you won $1,500. What are you going to do with all that money? <laughs> Bill, what are you going to do with yours? Well, I... My heart starts, stops jumping. <laughs> well, Evelyn, you just said the secret word, and you just won $100 in cash, and now my heart is stopping. <laughs> Well, now, uh, Evelyn, what are you going to do with all that money? I don't know. You're just dumbfounded, huh? Well, I'll help you spend it, Evelyn. And, Bill, what are you going to do with yours? Well, at first, I'm going to ride Why, a lot of slum gullion with that, huh? I'm going to ride that preferred berth you talked about. Oh. Well, you really cleaned up tonight. You won $210 in the quiz and $100 for the secret word and $1,500. All I can say to you both is congratulations. From the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast, you bet your life. You bet your life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life. Presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth $1,000. Fenneman, if you have nothing better to do this week, why don't you see our new movie, Love Happy? Hoppo Chico and I tell a few jokes and do some acting. It's very educational. Well, it's almost time for Bing Crosby, so good night, folks. And remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth Gila. Here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Traffic control begins at your wheel. This is George Benham, signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.